Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Liturgy Live from Trinity Episcopal Church in downtown Martinsburg, West Virginia. I'm the Reverend Ann Weatherholt, the interim rector, your celebrant today, along with our wonderful team of lay ministers and tech assistants. The service for this morning is Holy Eucharist Rite 2, beginning with the Great Litany. There is a bulletin that you can look at or download on the website to follow along. The litany is one of the oldest portions of our Book of Common Prayer and is used around the world throughout the Anglican Communion, quite often on the first Sunday in Lent. During the service, our talented musicians will play our hymns for you to enjoy, and I will read the words before they are played. Very often, I have always said that the one who sings prays twice, and in this case, hearing the words of the hymns are like wonderful poetry. The gospel reading for the first Sunday in Lent is always an account of the temptation of Jesus. Learning how Jesus responded to temptation is always a useful spiritual tool for us. I hope you've considered taking on a new Lenten discipline this year, maybe not giving something up because we've given up a lot this last year, but maybe taking something on. And I encourage you to make a small cash offering each day and set it aside, perhaps to be given to our blessing box or maybe to the Good Samaritan Fund at Trinity or some other charity of your choice. You can add up an offering and write a check and send it to the church before Easter. During Lent, we are offering a series on our website called The Way of Jesus with pictures and narrative from the Bible pictures from the Holy Land taken on various pilgrimages. New segments are published on the church website each week, leading you on a journey with Jesus from the Mount of the Transfiguration to the Ascension. This coming week, follow Jesus as he enters the Holy City on the back of a donkey and visits the temple each day. Next week, follow Jesus as he celebrates the Last Supper and praise in the Garden of Gethsemane. Thank you for your prayers and presence. You are loved and cherished by God and God's family, no matter where you come from, who you love, whether you are a doubter, a believer, religious or non-religious, you are welcome in this church community. Our opening hymn for today is 40 days and 40 nights, but we begin with the opening acclamation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. 40 days and 40 nights thou wast fasting in the wild, 40 days and 40 nights tempted and yet undefiled. Should not we thy sorrow share and from worldly joys abstain? Fasting with unceasing prayer, strong with thee to suffer pain. Then if Satan on us press, Jesus, Savior, hear our call. Victor in the wilderness, grant we may not faint nor fall. So shall we have peace divine, holier gladness ours shall be. Round us too shall angels shine, such as ministered to thee. Keep. O oh, keep us, Savior dear, ever constant by thy side, that with thee we may appear at the eternal Easter tide.
O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into the harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace, to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do, with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, 
and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of the Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and his sons with him, As for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that was on the earth that is on the earth, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly by whole verse a portion of Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. 
Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring God to you. Excuse me, bring you to God. He was put to death in flesh, and, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for the good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. The sequence hymn is, Bless the Lord my soul and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord my soul who leads me into life. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to teach his disciples. Excuse me, wrong one. <laughs> In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have two sons. They are now both 
in their 30s, and I have a, a grandchild and one on the way, but when my boys were little, we had a book for them that they absolutely loved, and it was called Where the Wild Things Are. Maybe you know that book, too. It's a story about a little boy called Max, who is sent to his room because we don't know why. But he's done something wrong, and he was sent to his room. And while he's in his room, he takes an imaginary journey to where the wild things are, and he meets all kinds of beasts. And some of them are scary, but some of them are friendly, and he has a wild rumpus. That was always a fun part of the book because there were so many pictures of all these wild things. And then at the end of the story, Max wakes up in his room and finds that his mother has brought him his supper and it was still hot. The last words in the story, and it was still hot. This is very much like the story of Jesus going into the wilderness. He went into the wilderness, and it says in our gospel today that he was surrounded by wild beasts. But we know that he survived. Perhaps he was not afraid of them so that they were not afraid of him. And it says that angels ministered to him, almost like mom bringing Max his supper, even though he'd been sent to his room. And that truly is the story of Lent, that sometimes, in some ways, God sends us to our rooms, that there are consequences for things that we do wrong. But there is always also God's grace and forgiveness, ready to bring us our supper when it's still hot, so that we might not be abandoned forever, even if we've been to where the wild things are. Amen. What would the story of Jesus' life be like without the story of the temptation? Suppose the gospel accounts went directly from the baptism of Christ to his preaching and first sermon in Galilee. Suppose instead of the Spirit driving him into the wilderness, the Spirit drove him into the nearest synagogue. What would we be missing? What difference would it make to you and to me? I've been thinking about that question all week. This account of the temptation of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark is the shortest in all of the Gospels. Both Matthew and Luke tell us in greater detail the three temptations and Jesus' reply to each. And this is where the strength of having four Gospels comes to the front, for there is no account of the temptation of Jesus in the Gospel of John, which was written in a more theological and perhaps less biographical tone. The three Gospels put this account of this event at the beginning of Jesus' ministry signaling its significance. Mark's account is very short. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and angels ministered to him. One sentence. Mark gives the basic details. Jesus went to, into a desolate place of hunger and thirst for a period of time that echoes other important turning points of the people of God. The rain of Noah's flood, we heard part of the story of Noah this morning, and the rain, we know, lasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Jesus encountered the spiritual foe in the wilderness, and that scene of desolation is depicted in the illustration on the front of our bulletin today. His only companions were wild beasts, no person met him, nor did he speak with anyone during that time, but he had communion with the angels, the messengers of God. A few years ago, my husband, Alan, and I were invited by the local Catholic priest in Hancock 
to a joint stations of the cross between St. Thomas, my husband's parish, and St. Peter's, which is literally just down the street. Two members, the members of two congregations, enjoyed a soup and sandwich supper and then went into the church for this moving service. At the stations, we knelt and prayed and sang the verse of a hymn. The ritual of the Stations of the Cross is practiced in some Episcopal churches as well. The presence of the Stations is often added during the season of Lent, just as we customarily have added them here in Trinity. And we're honoring that, that tradition at Trinity this year, rather than putting them in the church where really no one can see them, we are honoring that tradition with a series of videos called The Way of Jesus. They'll be appearing each Wednesday evening, and they use pictures from the Holy Land taken by Phil Steptoe and myself on various pilgrimages. But in any case, after the service at the Catholic Church, we went home, and Stephen, my younger son, who was 14 at the time, pulled out one of the DVDs we have of movies of the life of Jesus and started to watch it. And when I went upstairs, the scene of the temptation was just beginning. Based on the accounts from Matthew and Luke, Satan appeared to Jesus. And in the movie, the writers depicted Satan both as a seductive woman and a powerful man, luring Jesus into making choices that appeared to be both compassionate and sensible. In one scene, Jesus is shown in a crowded refugee camp. You can feed all these hungry people and all the hungry people in the world, says Satan. Why don't you do it? And Jesus' reply is that the hungry must be fed by God's word and that their hunger is often caused by the indifference of others. Again, tempted to take over the world and make things right, Jesus resists and says he will not use the power of God to control but enters the world as a servant. Now, obviously, Hollywood has expanded a bit on the words of the scriptures, but the ideas were compelling, and the scenery was impressive. And Satan's last words to Jesus in the movie, one might think they were comical, but in this setting they were kind of scary, were, I'll be back. And we know that from the Gospels and throughout the ministry of Jesus, Satan did creep back through intentions and motives and actions of those around Jesus. For example, the disciples rebuked Jesus when he mentioned suffering and the cross. And even when they began to accept the idea of a new kingdom on earth, they quarreled over who would be the most important, who would be Jesus' right-hand man. And at the end, they urged him to send for angels at the cross. They left him to be taunted by others. Save yourself and us. Come down from the cross, said those taunting on Calvary. Now, while we always enjoy the more positive parts of the gospel, the Sermon on the Mount and the parables and the wedding at Cana and the transfiguration, teachings about prayer and even Palm Sunday, woven throughout the gospels are also these harder moments and encounters. Even from the time of his birth, when Jesus' presence in Bethlehem resulted in Herod's order to massacre the children of that town, we must look clearly on the dark side of the Gospels, which point out the operation of sin and temptation in that time and in ours. Seeing Jesus in temptation, through temptation, is an important skill for maturing Christians to acquire. This is a lesson the disciples began to learn as they followed Jesus. That's a lesson we see in the lives of the saints and those in monastic communities. It's a lesson we see in the lives of Christians today. Think for a moment. Who are the greatest Christian examples that you know? Have their lives been perfect? Or have their lives been challenging in one way or another? Have they always done what is right? Or have they struggled or sometimes failed and then gone back to Jesus to find a new way. Remember that several years ago, before her death, Mother Teresa caused a small scandal just before she died by publishing a memoir where she revealed 
that at times she felt she had no faith. And yet this modern day saint was remarkable in the way she changed the lives of the very poorest of the poor on the streets of Calcutta, India. So what did Jesus do in the face of temptation? And maybe looking at our Savior will help us. First, he didn't shy away from temptation. He didn't pretend it wasn't there or it wasn't potentially very dangerous. Just like the wild beast, which may seem to be tame, but will erupt when hungry or threatened. He looked Satan in the eye and replied with the word of God. He was not thrown by apparent logic or by fake compassion, by careful twisting of what is evil to make it look good. He never forgot who he was or whose he was. Did Jesus emerge unscathed from these encounters? No, they took their toll. The scriptures say that some went away from Jesus and some doubted. Many turned away from him when he refused their offer of kingship. And many called him fake. And even his close followers could not stand the ultimate threat of death at the end. How then do we learn from the example of our Savior? I offer these reflections. When temptation comes to you, Face it head on. Don't try to put it off or minimize it or make excuses. Sin can be very subtle. Often we're drawn into behavior that is negative without fully realizing it. We say, it doesn't really matter. Just this once, it makes me feel good. It really doesn't hurt anyone. Continually read the scriptures and ask questions about how they apply to your life. Ask yourself, Will my behavior or choice serve to support the kingdom of God? Remember the times when Jesus was tested and stood firm. If we fully believe what we say, that Jesus is fully human as well as fully divine, then we can know that Jesus feels the same testing and the same kinds of difficulties that we do, and that the Holy Spirit stands as an advocate and a guide reminding us of Jesus' presence. Oddly enough, temptation can be an opportunity for spiritual growth. We grow stronger as we resist, just like lifting weights. And we may learn small lessons along the way to prepare us for greater temptations as we grow older. So what difference does the account of the temptations in the Gospels make for us? Jesus began his ministry with baptism a moment when God spoke from the heavens and immediately after the temptations arrived. And this is often true in spiritual life. Time and time again, I've experienced and heard from others that in those times when we feel closest to Christ, in those times when we've felt spiritually revived or renewed, and even in times when the Christian year, we pay more attention to our spiritual life, say like the beginning of Lent or during Holy Week or Easter or Christmas. Satan is at work as well, jealous of our time with God, seeking ways to roar with his lion's voice, corrupting what is good, twisting what is meant to be beautiful, seeking to split the community or lead people away from God. Jesus was tempted in every way, just as we are. And this is the wonderful grace of the Christian life, to know what temptation is, to learn how to respond, and to have faith that God is with us in every temptation that we might face. Amen. Prayers of the people can be, uh, form one can be found <clears throat> on page 389 in the Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above 
for the loving kindness of God, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Mike, our bishop, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the churches in Central Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Sands Crest Conference and Retreat Center in Wheeling, West Virginia. For our interim rector, Ann, for the vestry, search committee, staff, and people of Trinity. For those in our parish prayer cycle, especially the Thrasher family, the Tucker family, and the E. Wagoner family for those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President Joe, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who live and work in this community, especially Harriet, the mayor of Martinsburg, for the Norborn Preschool and Daycare Center, for our first responders, for all who are working to stop the spread of the coronavirus, especially Charles Steptoe, Margot Gum, Lisa Poland, Jennifer Barrett, Melissa Orr, and for all who continue to work in ways that support our common life, for all workers in the fields of education, business, transportation, for this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially on those on our parish prayer list, Tom and Mary, Wayne, Cody, Wally and Carolyn, Gary, Hick and Mary Ann, Charlie, Greg, Pat, Winifred, John, Judy, Gilbert and Carolyn, Don, Irene, Charlotte, Sylvia, Martin and Jane, and Jody. And for those recently needing our prayers on the, our extended prayer list, Sharon Novak, Kathy Sherman, Larry and Ronnie Penrose, Marty Thompson, and Colleen Braswell, and for those we name before you now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all the blessings of this life, especially those who have donated the flowers, altar flowers, by Jane DeForney and Thanksgiving for children and grandchild, and those who have donated the bread and wine by Jane DeForney and Thanksgiving for children and grandchild, and by Wayne and Belle Chapman in, in celebration of our 61st wedding anniversary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Samson Wright and those in whose memory their altar flowers have been given. By Jane DeForney in loving memory of beloved husband Peter DeForney, parents and parents Kenneth and Kay Baldwin, John and Marion DeForney, and those in whose memory the bread and wine have been given by Jane DeForney in loving memory of beloved husband Peter and parents, Kenneth and Kay Baldwin, John and Marion DeForney, 
and by Wayne and Bell Chapman in loving memory of family and friends, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God, to you, O Lord our God. O Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We give you God's blessing and grace today, and some of our other folks are here. We say hello to everyone. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace to Cody up there in the balcony. <laughs> As we gather today, may we remember the needs of the world, the church, and the community. During the season of Lent, you are invited to make a special offering each day toward the work of the kingdom of God. Consider a special love gift for the blessing box or for the Good Samaritan Outreach Fund of Trinity or the charity of your choice. Recently, we all heard about the terrible disasters in Texas with the flooding and the uh, freezing and the terrible things going on there. Remember that Episcopal Relief and Development is a wonderful place to make a gift that 100% of what you give goes directly to the local churches to assist with needs that are not met in other ways. Many, many years ago, there was a terrible fire in Hancock and my husband, Alan, was the recipient of some ERD money, and he was able to give it to local people to replace items they had lost in the fire um, that they couldn't get any other way. So please remember Episcopal Relief and Development. You can look it up online and give a gift that way. Also, the address is online if you want to send a check through the mail, and we'll send out more information this week on that as well. And if you're giving up something for Lent, make sure to take on something in its place whether that be an offering of treasure or time. As we prepare the altar, pray for God's grace and peace, and then lift up your offering to the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn, O oh love, how deep, how broad, how high, how passing thought and fantasy that God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortal's sake. For us baptized, for us he bore his holy fast and hungered sore. For us temptations sharp he knew, for us the tempter overthrew. For us he prayed, for us he taught, for us his daily works he wrought. By words and signs and actions, thus still seeking not himself, but us. For us to wicked hands, betrayed, scourged, mocked, in purple robe arrayed. He bore the shameful cross and death, for us gave up his dying breath. For us he rose from death again, for us he went on high to reign. For us he sent his spirit here to guide, to strengthen, and to cheer. All glory to our Lord and God, for a love so deep, so high, so broad. The Trinity whom we adore forever and forevermore.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with the saints and angels forever praising you and saying. and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed the good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. On the night after supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, again gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now, gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you from our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make your, whole, your new creation whole, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nations to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. And a prayer for those who cannot receive communion with us today. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Our communion hymn, the words are, O saving victim, opening wide the gate of heaven to us below. Our foes press on from every side. Thine aid supply, thy strength bestow. All praise and thanks to thee ascend forevermore, blessed one in three. O grant us life that shall not end in our true native land with thee. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow him. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is the great classic, 
A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dost ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaoth his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. Prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. That word, above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever.